happy to be back with the latest update of Fazer News, and here they are. Indonesia president says more ASEAN unity needed for Myanmar situation. Indonesian President Joko Widodo, chair of the ASEAN this year, said the bloc must show unity in deciding how to address the escalating crisis in Myanmar. Saya harus berterus terang. I must speak candidly on the implementation of the 5PC. There has not been significant progress. Therefore, ASEAN unity is required to decide on the next steps, but I wish to ensure that the issue of Myanmar must not hinder the acceleration of ASEAN community building, because ASEAN community building is one of the things awaited by the people of ASEAN. The president called on the 10-member body to charge the way forward to de-escalate spiraling violence in Myanmar since the 2021 coup, which triggered a wave of dissent and a bloody crackdown by the military. Myanmar's army has been fighting on multiple fronts against ethnic minority rebels and militias in a growing pro-democracy resistant movement. Indonesia has quietly been trying to engage all sides in the past few months. Malaysian Prime Minister vows to fight corruption at the biopic premiere. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim attended the premiere of Anwar, The Untold Story, a film that portrays his life story and political struggle. Anwar, who is also the finance minister, said, although not all the dialogue and narration are 100% accurate, the issue raised in the work group based on the real events. Uh, so, whether it has any political impact, I know that's secondary. This is a story that must be told. Uh, the battle against corruption continues. As you see, now that I'm Prime Minister, that has been the thrust of my campaign. I want to save this country and fight corruption and fight them hard. I Calling the biopic quite surreal, Anwar lauded the director and actors for their extraordinary effort, but spoke of some scenes that had episodes that we prefer to forget because they were incredibly painful and sad for his family and friends. Indonesia ready to talk to anyone to resolve Myanmar crisis. Indonesian President Joko Widodo, current chair of the ASEAN, said his country was ready to talk to anyone including the military junta in order to push for the implementation of a peace plans as the crisis in the military ruled Myanmar continued to escalate. Violations of human rights cannot be tolerated and the five-point consensus mandated by the ASEAN must engage all stakeholders. Inclusivity must be held harder by the ASEAN because ASEAN credibility is at, at stake and Indonesia is ready to speak to anyone, including with the junta. Violations of human rights cannot be tolerated and people must be protected, without emphasize at the conclusion of the 42nd ASEAN Leaders Summit, adding that engagement did not mean endorsement or recognition. As ASEAN Chair, Indonesia has been talking to all sides in recent months in attempt to get talks going and last month condemned military Myanmar over one of its latest and most deadly airstrikes that killed at least 100 people. Philippine court absolved fierce Duterte critic of drug charges. A Philippine court acquitted former Senator Leila de Lima, one of the first critics of ex-president Rodrigo Duterte, of a criminal charge stemming from allegations that as a cabinet minister, she had received money from drug dealers. Uh, si Senator Leila de Lima. Senator Leila de Lima always believed she was innocent and she cried when she heard that she was acquitted. Her reaction was she was overjoyed. She is thankful for the judgment passed. She is thankful to the media and her countrymen who continue to support her during her fight against persecution. The Lima 63 has been in detention for the past six years and despite her acquittal, she will not immediately be released because of another case pending in court. The Lima was charged in 2017, just a few months after she launched a Senate investigation into Duterte's war on drugs, during which thousands of users and dealers were killed, many by police or in mysterious circumstances. United States Army Chief meets Philippines counterpart in Manila to boost ties.
The United States Army Chief of Staff, James McConville, met with his Philippine counterpart, Commanding General of the Philippine Army, Romeo Bronner Jr. in Manila, during a one-day visit to strengthen the relationship between the two sides. So what this relationship is is really a, about uh, peace in the region, and that peace comes through strength, and that strength comes from uh, having countries that believe that a, a, a conflict in the region will affect everyone negatively, So, and that's what this is all about. Well, we have been friends, partners, and allies for many years, and uh, I had the opportunity to host General Bronner in the United States, and uh, uh, this is just an opportunity to come together and to continue to uh, improve our relationship, is, which is very strong and only going to get stronger in the future. Ties between the Philippines and the United States are seeing a reinvigorating under Duterte's successor, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who last week met President Joe Biden on a four-day visit to Washington. The Philippines organizes a review of the Asian Navy fleet. Philippines hosted ASEAN Fleet Review, which saw Navy vessels of member countries sail in the seas of the coast of Subic Bay, northeast of Manila. Nine navies, including those from ASEAN countries Philippines, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Brunei, and Vietnam, took part in exercise aimed at strengthening maritime partnerships. Ito, nakita natin ito yung uh, ginawa ng mga ASEAN navies. This is something na uh, we want to see every now and then. Kasi nakita natin, if all the armed forces are talking to each other, I think we can prevent uh, what to happen. Because uh, we are talking about peace, we are talking about understanding, and we are reaching out to everybody. The Philippine Navy in a statement said, the review is aimed at enhancing interoperability and readiness among partner nations for a wide range of potential operations. Investigators collect evidence after Tokyo High School students is tapped. Local media reported a 13-year-old junior high school student was tapped on his way to school in Tokyo. Meanwhile, public broadcaster NHK reported the suspect, a man in his 60s, was arrested near the scene of the attack in Tokyo's Ota Ward, where a bloodstained knife was found. Kyoto News said the victim, whose injuries are not believed to be life-threatening, was taken to the hospital. Kyoto News added police said that the assailant has seen admitted to the stabbing. G7 representative of parties guilty of violating undermining international rules. Spokesman for the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Wang Wenbin said the group of seven itself a representative of those guilty of violating and undermining international rules and is in no position to tell others what to do when it comes to international rules. Before discussing international rules, we need to first of all make clear what exactly the international rules are. For the overwhelming majority of countries in the world, international rules consist of the basic norms governing international relations based on the purposes and principles of the UN Charter and all countries must abide by them. Those rules serve the vested interest of a very few countries, including the G7, rather than the common interest of the international community. Media report says that the G7 summit, which will be held in the Japanese city of Hiroshima from May 19 to 21, will ask China to abide by international rules. The spokesman pointed out that when blaming others for not abiding by rules, the G7, especially the United States, is exactly the one who is violating international rules and preaching peace. Toyota suspends sales of Yaris model after safety test problem. Senior officials said Japanese car maker Toyota has stopped sales and deliveries of its Yaris Atif in Thailand after its affiliate Daihatsu rigged part of the door inside coalition safety test. Toyota and Daihatsu disclosed last month they were investigating how part of the door inside collision safety test carried out for some 88,000 small cars had been changed for the purpose of site on crash safety testing. 
However, I believe the recent Daihatsu problem is an act that betrays customers' trust and should never be tolerated. Thailand is Toyota Ford's biggest global center by production volume after Japan, the United States, and China. It produced some 659,000 vehicles, including models of its luxury brand Lexus, in the country last year. And that's the end for today. Thank you very much, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy. We will see you again.